I don't really know how to start shows. Come on now, don't start, don't start liking me now. So yeah, I'm funny compared to you. Know, well, you'll see later. I stand for my own. I know a lot of f-ing idiots. I think a lot of is mean spirited just because it goes against what they believe. But the relief of comedy is it takes things that aren't funny and it allows us to laugh about them for an hour. We got a purple suit to buy and a gigantic <laughs> coffin. Why are you laughing? Evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Why You Laughing, a history of comedy podcast. And today, I am pleased to introduce to you Tom Myers, the world's worst comedian. Uh, (laughs) So usually on this show, we like to celebrate the best of the best. And today, I think that's exactly what we're doing because Tom is the very best at being the worst. Uh, So he's literally ascended to the top of his field. There's no worse comedian than Tom Myers. So... I also think it's similar to a usual episode. Um, you know, listen, we may have uh, personal vendettas that we get out on this show every once in a while. Uh, just a few weeks ago with Dat Fan, as a matter of fact, is a good example. But I do feel the Tom Myers episode will be more in line with what we usually do uh, because I think there is a, quote, fan base for Tom Myers. There's people that know a lot about Tom Myers. And a lot of the clips we're going to play today, much like when we appreciate the legends like Norm Macdonald or Patrice O'Neill. Uh, there are a lot of people that are like, hey, I've heard that before, but I still appreciate the walk down memory lane, memory lane that you're taking me on. There are also people that have never heard of Tom Myers. Somehow, somehow he's missed their radar. And I think to those people, this is going to be a very eye opening experience. So basically, I just kind of want to walk you through today the basics of Tom Myers, why he was able to build up some sort of cult following and how he got the reputation as being the world's worst comedian. So we will dive into that today. But first, I do want to let you guys know that if you want to support the show, we would appreciate it. And the best way to do that is to go to blindmike.net. That's where you'll find all our links. That's where you'll find the YouTube, subscribe, if you'd be so kind. Um, Patreon, where you can put a few bucks behind us. And uh, you get bonus episodes there on Patreon every single month, as well as these episodes a week early. Um, So you get the freebies a week before the uh, public, which is uh, pretty good. Pretty good. I don't know why I (laughs) went into that. (laughs) (laughs) I was trying to think of what else we have on there. Free links to uh, Blind Mike Project and who are these socials as well as our merch. So if you want to go to blindmike.net, check out that out if you'd be so kind um we also have youtube memberships but uh, i don't know it seems like a pain in the ass so (laughs) do do it if you want i guess if you're feeling frisky yeah all right so let's get into it because uh if you are someone like me you were probably introduced to tom myers through a podcast called come town um no longer exists anymore they've pivoted to the adam friedland show but there was once, once upon a time, there was a podcast called Come Town that introduced the masses to Tom Myers. And since then, uh, other shows like uh, Who Are These Podcasts, uh, myself, I'm sure plenty of others, have dipped their toe into the world of Tom Myers. But I do feel not as many people know of Tom as uh, there should be because Tom doesn't have a great mind for business or marketing. He doesn't understand how to sell himself to the public. So today we're going to make the pitch for Tom in a way as to why you should be following his career and why he's such a fascinating character. And we'll start with kind of where the, the, the cult started to build the reputation uh, started to precede Tom because uh, Tom is a comedian out of the Baltimore, Maryland area, sp- uh, specifically Haver de Grace but I think he frequents the Baltimore and maybe DC comedy scenes. Um, So in that area, you know, in all these pockets, I'm sure it happens in Boston all the time and Austin and Chicago and these kind of cities where there's a comedy scene that's not quite, you know, New York, New York or LA, but these people that have devoted their lives to comedy, they kind of, you know, they they build a family of sorts. So that's what happened in, in Maryland. And part of this inner circle of comedy, a guy that everyone knew uh, down that way, was named Tom Myers. So there, a roast happened in this uh, inner circle, and Tom Myers was on the dais. Um, I don't even know who the roast is for. If I said the guy's name, I'm sure you wouldn't know it. 
I don't think it's the roast of Tom Myers because he wasn't closing. So um, I'm not exactly sure the origin of this, but Baltimore radio legend Mickey Coachella, he was uh, just an FM talk radio guy down there and also a stand-up comedian. Um, he would have Tom on his show from time to time, and he is one of the many people who was fascinated with the career of Tom Myers. And so uh, instead of focusing on anyone else on the dais, he basically took the time out to really zero in on Tom and try to make the point of uh, uh, just how legendary Tom's career was even at that point. Uh, uh, you see, as comedians, there's a pecking order. And I admit, I am way down on the list. I'm in the area on the list of greatness where nobody even recognizes your name. But Tom has the honor of being all the way at the bottom. <laughs> like, just let's be honest. When you see a list, it could be the 100 greatest lawnmowers ever. You're going to go, oh, what's the greatest? Oh, look at that, John Deere. What's the worst? Holy shit, Tom Myers, the Belongo. <laughs> Those are the, you either want to be the greatest or the fucking worst. Because they both mean the same thing to me. You're fucking known. Tom Myers, you've achieved that, my friend. <laughs> so everyone in this circle of comedians has, it's pretty much a unanimous opinion that Tom Myers is a god-awful comedian. We'll show you why in a minute. If you're not familiar with Tom and you're thinking this seems like an unfair bashing, uh, we'll do our best as this, as this episode unfolds to try and get you to understand the, the subtle nuances of Tom's brilliance. Um, but my point is, before anyone outside of Baltimore had ever heard Tom's name, this was kind of the opinion. But what's amazing about Tom is he's unflappable. There's no getting to this guy. He has a tremendous ego. So the reason for this episode, as we talked about on the Blind Mike Project, uh, Tom, we did our best to support Tom and try and become fans of Tom and convert the audience into becoming fans and really do our best to support him, not just, um, you know, emotionally, <laughs> not just by going, but, you know, lining his pockets. We tried to give this man money and he was still just a rude, condescending, arrogant guy unfortunately. And so that's why I felt we should examine him further because I think there's something to be said for that. You know, I'm a guy that that lacks confidence. And so there are things where confidence would help me a great deal. And I admire Tom for that, because like I said, there's no penetrating that mind. He thinks he's great. And that is evidence, I think, by our next clip, right? This is him talking about, you know, just doing his job and why he does it. And yeah, on the news. <laughs> So, Tom, this is a clip from uh, Tom was out promoting his album, Make America Innate Again, which we covered that on the Patreon uh, a couple months ago. So go check that out if you like. But um, Tom is on the news promoting that local Baltimore news, and he's talking about what an edgy guy he is, you know, just how he's constantly offending audiences and dropping jaws all over the nation. And uh, this newscaster is like, well, that's got to be a tough life to live. So tell me about that. And you say Thanks, that some, some of your jokes, though, have gotten you into a little bit of trouble. Right. So why keep telling them? Yeah, because it's my job. Mm -hmm. You know, it's no different than, you know, a police officer running to the scene of a crime or a firefighter <laughs> running into a burning building. It's what I do. Hold on. Hold uh, on one second. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hold on. There's more. He keeps going. By what I just want you to note, it's no different. It's, it's exactly the same as a firefighter running into a burning building <laughs> or a policeman. Now, that would have been a very funny joke if he was joking, but he's not. That's what's weird about Tom. is I, it, It's hard to decide if the funnier things that come out of his mouth are the bizarre punchlines that he writes or when he's taking himself seriously. They're neck and neck for what's more hilarious, how Tom thinks of himself or what he thinks comedy is. And that, that's where the true debate lies. Let me know in the comments, folks. Is it funnier when Tom is pontificating seriously or watching him try and come up with a punchline and try and 
see life the way human beings see it and relate that thought process to us. And to me, it's, it's, you know, neck and neck, one A and one B. It's tough to call. You know, what's funny is uh, recently on Blind Mike Project, we were talking about how uh, Brendan Schaub <laughs> compared comics to Navy SEALs. Yeah. He's in yeah. great company. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what a lot of these guys, the, the problem with the, a lot of these guys is they're posers and they want to be considered real comedians. So they talk about it like they are in the trenches, like they're dealing with the same things that policemen and firefighters and the military are. That's how they have to think of it because it's how they give themselves this, this self-importance because they are so arrogant. Guys like Tom are tremendously arrogant. Like, um, so we saw Tom for anyone that doesn't know, we went and saw Tom in Haver de Grace, his home, his home stomping grounds. And, uh, our buddy drew P balls, one of the great gearheads, uh, was waiting outside the show <laughs> and he's the only one there until Tom walks up. And the door's locked. Tom can't get into his own show. And uh, Drew walks up to him and says, hey, Tom, big fan. And Tom gives him like the pipe down sign and walks away from him. The, the, I mean, I, if someone, if I was doing a live show, one person showed up and even pretended to be a fan of mine. It would warm my heart. I'd be so, I'd hug them, I'd embrace them, I'd consider them a member of my family. The arrogance for Tom to be like, yeah, 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 buddy, I got a lot going on. As you can see, I'm locked out of the building I'm supposed to be performing at. Yeah, and how many, like five people came from the Boston area for this shit? It's it, it's amazing. But anyways, let's. There, there's more to this clip, if you can believe that. He's not done... Um, filling us in with how brutal it is to be a comedian. You know, it's no different than, you know, a police officer running to the scene of a crime or a firefighter running into a burning building. It's what I do. You know, Mort Saul was blacklisted by Hollywood because he kept bringing the, he kept talking about the Warren Commission report mm -hmm. on stage. Lenny Bruce kept having obscenity trial after obscenity trial. Okay, hold on one second. We've done episodes on Mort Saul and Lenny Bruce. I want you to go back and listen. Uh, to how different the, their lives were compared to Tom Myers, <laughs> you know, ma making ham handed Trump jokes in Baltimore in 2023. <laughs> George Carlin's one of his bits was taken to the United States Supreme Court. Wow. So, you know, I'm not really doing anything, not doing anything different. I'm, you know, I'm not running for. Oh, whoa, whoa, Tommy. Not doing anything different. How about, you know, selling albums or selling out shows? That might be a little different. Yeah. He is a, thing. Moving, moving tickets is something that they, they did that I don't know if you have that claim yet. He is a historian, so he could have been good on this show, but no, he ruined that. That's amazing. It's it's really amazing. And again, I hate to drag Brendan Schaub into this, a great American <laughs> like Brendan Schaub. But a few months ago, we heard there was a clip of him going around saying like, Hey, you know, I sure I have haters, but so does Tom Brady and LeBron James. And yeah, I guess technically that's true. Those guys do have haters. You have to examine the reasons. <laughs> I think with Tom, with Tom Brady and LeBron James, it's probably because those guys beat the teams that the, the haters root for or something. <laughs> with, with you, it's because they legitimately hate you for some reason. <laughs> and that's something you're not examining, unfortunately. And Tom never, he doesn't have the self-awareness to look at that and think, you know, why, why am I getting this feedback? Is it because much like George Carlin or Lenny Bruce, I'm being arrested for the words I'm saying, or are people trying to help me by saying, stop saying these things out loud. It makes you look bad. And I feel like we should almost apologize to the listeners because every time we do Tom Myers, we hear something we haven't heard in a clip. If we even heard it before, like I never caught him saying that, and we have to pause a lot. So it, it, it's rough. Yeah, there will be a lot of pause. This might be a nine-hour episode today. We'll see. Being <laughs> to a church group, I'm, right. I'm telling <laughs> jokes to people who, you know, exceeded the two-drink minimum, like 30 minutes before I got on stage. I mean, it's they know what they signed up for, right? Yep, that, absolutely. That's, that's what they get. Whoa, guys, B -b buckle, strap in. You signed up for this. <laughs> That's what they get. <laughs> <laughs> that I will say though, that's where Tom finally hits the nail on the head. That's what everyone walking out of his show says. Like, well, we signed up for it, I guess. You know, we <laughs> we chose my, to come here and do this to ourselves. My fault. No one else's. <laughs>
but uh, uh, next we have some examples of what he's talking. Okay, about. yeah. So you guys might be thinking we're beating up on this guy for no reason, unfair. You know, th there's probably a lot of comedians worse than Tom Myers, right? How could anyone? Comedy's subjective. How could anyone objectively be the world's worst comedian? So we're going to take you through the history here, as we often do on Why You Laughing. We're going to start at the beginning. And Tom Myers had the, the balls, the cojones, to release an album uh, fresh out of college. He said, hey, already, and this is, mind you, 2004, I believe, 2005, maybe at the latest. And at that time, it was a lot more work to put out. There wasn't like, you couldn't just post a special on YouTube. This took a lot of time, effort, and, and probably resources for Tom to put this out there. Um, so fresh out of college, he puts out an album. And I think as I was going through these clips, I had a lot more that I was going to play today. And then I think I decided Words of Mass Destruction. I'll let you have a minute with that title. Uh, I feel that should be a full Patreon breakdown at some point. So we've got a couple tracks off of words of mass destruction because remember tom's words are such weapons i will they say <laughs> that for the correct comic that would be actually a pretty good title <laughs> well in many ways they, it, they are nuclear bombs so <laughs> I, it does fit <laughs> <laughs> so words of mass destruction it was timely and uh tom put these out there i think it may require like i said full patreon examination um, but here's one standoff, stand up bit off of that album. No, but Arnold Schwarzenegger. What about, do, you have, do you have any like big supporters of Schwarzenegger in here? Yeah, neither am I. But <laughs> see, here's why I don't like him. You see, whenever he starts talking or like, making speeches, he really doesn't make any sense. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, comedians go through different phases in their career. So I do want you to keep in mind that Tom Tom went away from impressions. But Words of Mass Destruction was very impression heavy. You get <laughs> Nixon on here, which again, very timely in 2004. Uh, you get both Bushes. Um, there, there, are, I, I forget, there are some other we're going to hear too right here. Um, but there are a bunch of impressions on this album. Now, Tom has pivoted away from that. But I just want to show you guys what we lost. We did an impressionist episode. We talked about Dana Carvey, uh, you know, Daryl Hammond, Eddie Murphy, Bill Hader, Dan Soder, a lot of the greats. But the world missed out on this impression master. He really doesn't make any sense because whenever he like makes a speech, he always goes up. He's going to talk about how he's going to improve the state of California. Coming to Arnold Schwarzenegger, going to take care of the state of California. Arnold, is that you? Wow. I've got the headache right now, but it's not a tumor. <laughs> what does your daddy do? I'll tell you what my daddy did. My daddy used to strip me naked, stand me in front of the mirror, and he would make me look in the mirror and he would say, Arnold, you are a girly man. <laughs> and you continue to be a girly man unless you make something of yourself. So I continue to make something of myself. I was a bodybuilder, I was an actor, and now I'm the governor of California. <laughs> Obviously, no one from California is in here, but that's fine. <laughs> well, actually, there is. <laughs> well, that's great. Yeah. I, I, I'm just glad that he didn't try and shoehorn any obvious Arnold Schwarzenegger movie lines in there that we've heard as radio drops for the last 30 years. At least he didn't do that. Thank God. I think the only one he missed, honestly, was I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Tom crosses it off the list. That's hack. I, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. But literally, he went to the lengths of saying his father would stand him up in the mirror and say you're a girly man with his penis tucked between his whatever the fuck he said. <laughs> but in reality, Arnold Schwarzenegger's father fought for the Nazis. Like, if you're going to invoke Arnold's father, there's something interesting. There's an interesting road to go down. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he just smashes into a brick wall. Nothing. <laughs> Can't come up with anything for it other than movie lines. So, and then this is a great, again, Tom was in college, maybe a lot of room to grow after this, but this is something, he, a habit he has not dropped in the, the many years since then, uh, nearly two decades, is that 
when a joke bombs, as you heard it do on his album that he released, no one made him release this. He chose <laughs> to put it out there. When a joke falls completely flat, no one gives a fuck. Tom will say, he'll diagnose it on the spot and say, clearly you guys aren't laughing because you're not from California. Now, just for a little perspective for you kids out there, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, arguably one of the biggest movie stars of all time. <laughs> arguably, yes. <laughs> now, biggest action star possibly. You right? know, it was pre-internet, so I don't know my history that well. Maybe those movies were only shown in California and just made a lot of money. Is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyone from California know Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> hey, this is kind of a regional thing. You guys ever heard of Arnold? You know the Terminator? <laughs> no, no one. I guess you guys aren't California buffs. <laughs> You don't know your local California history. Obviously, this uh, you know this very niche Arnold material isn't hitting with you guys. <laughs> but uh, that's what Tom still does to this day: is he'll he'll diagnose a reason why the audience isn't laughing, <laughs> and psychologically, that's so fascinating to do because instead of telling yourself it's not you're not funny. Tom comes up with, he's like, no, you know what? It's their fault. They're doing this to me. They're not, there's a reason they're not laughing and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I, I, I have a feeling I know what it is. So like when, uh, in like my first three months of doing stand up, there'd be like sometimes that you would get a couple laughs. So you, in your head, you're like, see, this material is funny. Right. Then, so then when you go and do it again and again, people aren't laughing. They're like, you're like, what the fuck is up with these people? <laughs> it's, it's, it's really funny. <laughs> It's, it, they're, they're, I can't imagine a scenario where Tom walked into an open mic and said, it's not a tumor, <laughs> and the place erupts. <laughs> yes! Give us I'm more tell, Arnold! I'm Please. telling you, he, he had that one night that was just magic. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he was... <laughs> You, but the thing is, you're supposed to get over that after about four months. <laughs> yeah, you look in the crowd; it's a young me and Justin there. Like, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, his next, his next impression. Oh boy! So, well, he had multiple interesting things about this album. It was kind of an artistic piece, you know. Um, the, the way co some comedians now, you'll see some of this more and more, where comedians will kind of cut, it, do weird things with the audience. Um, or or make different cutaways, or even more serious stuff. Like Gary Gullman put out an HBO special where he talks about his depression. So it's like a documentary interspliced with stand-up bits. So you see that sort of stuff. Tom Myers kind of went down the same road, and he said, hey, I do a college radio show. <laughs> Obviously, more people wish they could hear college radio, you know. All right. Uh, it's ah, just a, such a damn shame. I'm not within the radio frequency. I can't, I can't, I can't catch it. Tom says, I'm going to send that to the public. I'm going to take a bit from my radio show. So I guess it's a, this is a commercial they ran on his college radio station that he plugged into the album for some reason. And again, I won't spoil who this is. You guys will know from the second you hear his voice, a famous celebrity. Listen up, people. This is Arlie Ermey. Is it? Is it though? I don't think it is. <laughs> is it Arlie or me? <laughs> I mean, you could you could make an argument for like a old age Jack Nicholson, maybe. It's also he's picked like so far we've heard him pick like two of the easiest impressions <laughs> to do, <laughs> and he's ooh flailing, swinging and missing. Well, I'd say Arnold's definitely easy. I don't know if I know anyone that's even tried Arlie Army. <laughs> but, but I guess my point is more like it's it's more the energy with Arlie Army. You know right. what I mean? Like everyone knows those full metal jacket lines, so it seems right. like it would be easy. But Tom goes a different direction with it. Listen up, people. This is Arlie Army, host of Mail Call on the History Channel. And you're listening to the Myers Experience Got your student radio. I like, I like that he gives Arlie Ermey's proper credits. Like, instead <laughs> of saying from Full Metal Jacket, he's like, no, 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 I'm going to name the History Channel show that he's on now that, you know, 4% of the audience is going to know him from. <laughs> you know, we got something in common. I'm on the History Channel, and Tom, well, he's a history major. Well, maybe we don't have anything in common then, but... Just keep listening. Oh. Show, 
<laughs> that hurt because you're he, again. He's he's choosing to put these things out there. He sold this. He charged people money for this. That's tough. We got a lot in common. Tom, he's a history major, and I'm on the History Channel. <laughs> See what's funny in my head? I'm like, oh yeah, he was a major in the army, probably. We we we've, we've both said the word history. <laughs> We've both been to Wisconsin. <laughs> Two history adjacent guys, Arlie Ermey and Tom Myers. And it's also like neither of the n- neither half of that is a joke. Arlie Ermey was on the History Channel, and Tom Myers, I assume, was a history major. It'd be great if he wasn't. What's the joke? <laughs> He's like, uh, what's what's the uh What's that that major everyone takes when they have nothing to do? Liberal arts. Yeah, liberal I know, arts. I don't know because I took it, but <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what I want to do. It's called liberal <laughs> arts. <laughs> All right. So that was that was words of mass destruction. I like I said, we'll go through it with a fine tooth comb because that's not the only segment interspliced in there from Tom Meyer's illustrious radio career. You also get just segments where he's talking about topical Maryland news on that album. <laughs> and I got to tell you, it holds up Mwah. magnifico. It's like, the, it's like the Carlin clips that circulate today, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's like, wow, still relevant. Who would th- have thought? It's on the same level of Simpsons did it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, next, we have a, um, a different special, I believe. Uh, where he's talking about uh, GPS. Oh, that makes its way in already, huh? Yeah. I, w- I wasn't ready. <laughs> 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 this is... <laughs> so we're, we're going through the years with Tom. This is years later when he felt more comfortable. This is about 2013-ish. Um, this is an album entitled Pitchforks, Torches, and Other Random Thoughts. A, a catchy title, if nothing else. I don't hate it. You love his titles, huh? <laughs> Not the last one. <laughs> no one Pitch works, sure. torches, and other random thoughts. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, what's interesting about this album, I mentioned Come Town. Uh, Stavros Halkius is in the house for this. And if you listen to the full album, you hear his laugh a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it was not dissimilar from Heartbreak and Havard de Grace that I was there for. You, you hear one voice more than others. See, that would have been great if he was recording that night because that would have been a perfect title for that show. <laughs> <Our breaking home. laughs> and uh, the other interesting aspect is not only was Stavros there, but Nick Mullen opened for Tom Myers on this fake <laughs> <laughs> And from what I've heard, uh, was not particularly compliment- complimentary about the comic you were about to see. <laughs> so, so this is in uh, Sean Bones. Shout out to Sean Bones. Um, this album is recorded in a bar in uh, Haver de Grace, I guess. And uh, Tom Myers is talking about GPS. Now, try to keep in mind, uh, people have had cell phones. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, smartphones. For about six years at this point. But uh, Tom works in a GPS bit here. I actually, I finally got this. I finally caved and uh, got a smartphone. So I'm being, I've been dragged uh, kicking and screaming into the year 2007. So. Okay, some people aren't good at math, but, you know, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that. Their fault again. I, I, lo- yes. I love this because, you know, it's got the it's got the GPS on it, but the GPS, it's for some reason, like this is supposed to be one of the most technologically advanced things. Like we have the Internet on our phones now. We can connect to any single bit of information we want. We can go ahead and watch entire television shows on our phone, like as they're like, even as they're being aired on regular television. Can we come up with a GPS that doesn't sound like an eight-year-old reading something? Like, (laughs) (laughs) you head 95 south and turn onto exit 77. Now, hold on again. I know it's it's unfair to Tom because I don't do this. When we broke down Richard Pryor's album, I wasn't constantly stopping it to critique it. But I do have to inject. It's not that... The voice of the GPS, as Tom calls it, uh, it's not that it sounds like an eight. No one's like, oh, is this a child reading the It was robotic, I guess, mm-hmm. because that's what the technology was. But there's 
you went from MapQuest. You would have to print out literal maps and leave them on your passenger seat and look at them when needed. It was, and before that, you just had to go through real maps or write down directions. It was chaos. And now a voice is saying, like, hey, asshole, turn left up here. I was going to say, the first time I used a GPS and it told me to turn and I was at exactly where it said, it blew my fucking mind. Yeah, no one's like, boo, <laughs> I wish the voice sounded more like me. <laughs> I wish it sounded more like Arnold. And it was like, hey, turn left, uh, tumors. Yeah, but it, also you can tell this is a, a bit where uh, Tom has been doing it for at least six years yeah. because he shoehorns the fact that he has a smartphone. Right. And then just goes, but what I like about smartphones is it has the GPS on it. <laughs> Route 24. <laughs> Trap in, gang. This goes on for a while. Mm -hmm. In one mile, make a right onto bus US 1. <laughs> In point five miles, make a left onto South Main Street. All right, we got it. We get the gist. And that's how you get the Sean Bolins. The oh. end. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. He wasn't even making like joke <laughs> jokes in there at all. That's the weird thing. I think they were the real directions to Sean Bolins. <laughs> I think they were. <laughs> It's uh, crazy. There's no punchline written. He's like, isn't isn't it crazy that a computer voice doesn't sound like you or I? Like, I know, <laughs> Give it 10 years, Tom. That, it's going to scare the shit out of you. He's going to do a, a bit about current AI in 2032. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I can make uh, Joe Rogan talk to Elon Musk if I wanted to. It's like, yeah, no, we remember. I can make Joe Rogan compliment me and how good I am. <laughs> Uh, but next bit, he uh, talks about his parents. Uh, okay, this is a little sadder, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> but let's hear it. But, you know, I, I mentioned my parents earlier. Like, they've come out to see me perform a lot of times. They always, you know, they always enjoyed themselves. And, uh, you know, they're not stage parents by any by, by any means of the word. I mean, they appreciate what I'm, they appreciate what I'm doing. Uh, again, pause. I'm sorry. Stage parents, Tom, you're 35. <laughs> he's acting like he's eight. <laughs> Stage parents. <laughs> come on, little guy. Get up there and do your act. <laughs> my mom does my makeup before I come up here. <laughs> yeah, Tom's mom's slapping a cupcake out of his hand. Not <laughs> till you've earned it. <laughs> Just a balding middle-aged man. <laughs> this is that I make to go ahead and be able to do what I want to do and uh, and have a good time doing it. And uh, so, you know, I, I'll sit down with them at dinner and we'll go ahead and talk. And, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and say to my parents, you know, listen, I love when you support me. I love when you come out and, you know, you don't you, you don't have to think I'm the funniest person in the world. You know, oh, no. they both just looked at me and went, we don't. <laughs> Thanks, mom and dad. That was both of them. <laughs> both this of them. feels uncomfortably real. Oh, yeah. Also, why would the conversation start with, hey, hey, mom and dad, you don't have to think I'm the funniest person in the world. <laughs> I don't even understand the print. What? Where's this going? He's like, I oh, know we don't. <laughs> <laughs> but literally, <they're, laughs> I'm certain that's a real conversation. Earlier in his set, he's like, uh, my parents couldn't be here. There's no joke attached to this. He's like, my parents couldn't be here tonight. They're uh, they're a little older, and it's a little late for them. They don't like to come out to stuff like this. Moving right along. There was no joke. It was just like, I'm recording a special, and my parents couldn't be bothered to be here. I uh, called my mom, and I said, hey, I'm recording a special. Do you want to come? And all I heard on the other side of the phone was, <sighs> just... Are we doing anything tonight? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. I have bridge. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, the next one is uh, his big closer. Oh, was that was that uh, the end of that track? Yeah. Oh, geez. Um, so there's not even really a joke there. It's just my parents hate me. <laughs> it's just real sad. <laughs> okay, so he's talking a little more about his parents. I forgot till I was pulling clips of the of the great album pitchforks torches and other random thoughts 
By the way, on the way to Maryland to see Tom, Justin and I listened to both of these albums. <laughs> Imagine how exhausted we were by the time we got there. Oh, man. <laughs> um, so uh, here's his, his uh, big closer, and no one knows how to go out with a bang like Tom Myers. But, um, but uh, uh, like I said, I, I just turned 30, and uh, my parents decided to go ahead and take me out to uh, – they decided to go ahead and take me out to dinner. Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, 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 it was after the dinner. My father decided to show me this uh, gift he had gotten for me. It was like, "This is you're going to thank me. This will be a long. <laughs> this will be a long. This will be a good investment for me, and uh, you'll really appreciate this." So, I'm like, "Okay, well, you know, we've all got to get in the car and go see it." So, okay, we all all in the car. We're driving, driving. I know this was driving a while. Fuck. We go ahead and we pull into a cemetery. It's like I'd remember going to this cemetery before, I and mean, we went ahead and pulled up to this little plot. And uh, we all got out, and we're looking. We're, I'm just sort of looking around. Where where are we going? And uh, and my, my dad stops and says, "All right, here you go." I'm looking around. It's a little bit dark. I don't see anything. Like what? So all right, we're a minute in, and so far all he says is, "I've been looking around." <laughs> just <laughs> hey, so that we got in real time his drive from Chili's to the cemetery. Yeah, this was a full reenactment. <laughs> Gets out a flashlight and uh, and shines it, and I suddenly remembered where I was. Like this is, I've been to the cemetery plot many times before. It's like my dad's grandparents are there, my dad's parents are there. He's got his he's he he's going to be buried there. He's got a tombstone set up. It's got his name on. It's got his name, his stuff on it, and right in front of that, a tombstone. My name. <laughs> My date of birth, and that nice, big, empty space. Jesus. For you know what. <laughs> um, Dad. <laughs> I asked for GPS. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. Oh, you got a cell phone. An adult, you know. Uh, like, and I can imagine this smart ass thing will kick in in point one miles, fall six feet. They're Stavros. <laughs> you have reached your destination. Okay, there must be more, right? I'm actually going to go right now, so that's been my <laughs> Oh, my God. That had to... oh, I've never heard a comedian let the laughter die out and then say, I'm actually going to go right now. <laughs> I, I've never met someone or I've seen a comic that I'm like, all right, that premise isn't bad, and he just can never do anything with it. Well, it... it if it happened, which I have my questions because I don't think uh, head places that make headstones leave an open ended date. No, they do. They my do. Grandma, yeah, my grandmother's is like that. Oh well, there you go. All right, so that's something. So maybe it did happen, which makes it even more interesting because now Tom has a legitimate story. That's a fascinating thing that your parents would be so. She's inept. eighty. She's eighty eight. But even still, I mean, <laughs> they do it. So that's something in Tom's yeah. favor. Yeah. So. <laughs> So I guess Tom's parents are like rooting for his death and put his put his fucking name on there and then brought him all the way out there. That's an interesting thing. That's never happened to anyone I know. Right. So that makes for a fascinating story. And Tom just has nothing. For the first time in his life, people are captivated. Because as you're the, the crowd is like quiet. They're actually listening. Right. <laughs> they're like, holy shit, where is this going? Yeah. And Tom just the only punchline he can think of is. Um, dad, <laughs> <laughs> he could have done like a whole thing about like, uh, so I asked my dad, like, uh, what do you think is going to be on the rest of that thing? Like, just start making like a whole thing about what I the guess, rest of it's going to say. Just anything. anything. You could have gone anything. anywhere with it. And he has nothing. And he, it's just a callback to his legendary GPS bit. 
Or he could have been like, oh, yeah, my dad put a date three years and two months from now on there. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need to examine what a horrible comedian Craig is. But what I, the point of this is. I'm thinking of anything <laughs> to go off of it. I don't know. Yeah. No, it's it's bizarre. But my favorite part is closing a special the way you would like if you were out to dinner with another couple and they get in a fight. That's how Tom ends his special. Like, ah, uh, you know, guys, we're gonna head out of here. Actually, no, I'm actually pretty tired. I'm no, really... you know, no, no, no. It's not you. No, honestly, no. It was a great night, but yeah, jeez, we got to get up early in the morning, and <laughs> that's how Tom leaves his audience. All right, give me a call tomorrow, and uh... <laughs> no, 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 really, guys, don't even sweat it. You were great. But just like, <laughs> ah, jeez, so tired. Long drive home, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna split. Actually, I gotta leave. So. <laughs> I'm just thinking of it now. I, I left my uh, the iron on, so. <laughs> uh. So I recommend you check out both of those works, Pitchforks, Torches, and Other Random Thoughts, and Words of Mass Destruction. We'll, we'll break those down at some point on Patreon. We also broke down Make America Nate again. That's how prolific Tom is, that he has at least three albums, possibly more, uh, that are circulating the internet. He hasn't put one out in a while, not since uh, 2018. So hopefully... We he's got a new one cooking. Man. We are due. <laughs> yeah, hopefully he's got a new one in the works. But uh, next we have uh, the first time that he was mentioned by Come Town. Okay, yeah. So, so far, all of this has happened in Tom's life, but it's really just for the amusement of other Baltimore open mic comedians. No one else outside of that inner circle knows about it until one day, for some reason, <laughs> a podcast called Come Town blew up to where they were making $100,000 a month on Patreon. <laughs> now, the reason I say for some reason is because uh, Nick Mullen is, uh, I think, a brilliant podcaster and a hilarious comedian. But even he kind of started this venture with the idea that no one would really listen to it. Um, and Adam Friedland wasn't even on the show yet, I don't think, the first time this got brought up. It's just Nick and Stavros fucking around. And they mention a guy named Tom Myers, who they know is going to be a fun guy to talk to. They don't realize they're going to have a cult of people that are going to be fascinated by this man. So it's interesting to hear them having no clue what sort of impact this is about to have on Tom's life. We were going to talk about Tom Myers. Oh, yes. The um, king. Tom Myers is uh, the greatest comedian of all time. Ab my favorite <laughs> stand -up comedian. Um, if you, if you want to know more about Tom Myers, go to YouTube. And type in Ed Schrader show. <laughs> and that's S H R A D E R, Tom Myers. And Tom was a guest on Ed's like a surreal talk. Yeah, show. yeah, yeah. But it's funny. So the whole the setup is is it's supposed to be like an it's supposed to have this like weird. It's a troll talk show. It's basically. A, yeah, it's a troll. It's like a hipster ironic talk show right. so to the extent that even the announcer for the show is some guy that's like and your next girl like he's doing a dumb voice like everything's supposed to be bad and they got the best comedian you could for an ironic talk show absolutely which is tom myers who the king looks baby. like steve buscemi dresses like <laughs> bill hicks you know what's funny about tom myers is tom myers had that hairline and had the solution to that hairline, which is that weird comb over thing that he does <laughs> at like age 21. When I met him, yeah. I was like 16. He was uh, 16 or 17. And I'm like, oh, this guy's in his like late 30s. Absolutely. You, he, he looks. <laughs> so they laid out right there the perfect roadmap to finding the a piece of comedy gold. If there was a stand up comedy museum, this should be the first item in there. Right. is Tom Meyer's appearance on Ed Schrader's show. Now, there's a lot of different directions. What, what I found fascinating about that clip and re-listening to it years later is that I think if Nick Mullen introduces this subject in any other way, Tom might not be the cult figure that he is today. If he just mentioned the shitty comedian named Tom Myers from Baltimore, there's going to be people that look into it, but not in the droves that went to find the appearance on Ed Schrader's show, because this is a bomb like you've never seen before. We talked about Dat Fan and what a bad comedian he is and everything. Um, on Patreon, we've talked about people like Dan Ninen. A lot of people have requested a Dan Ninen episode. Uh, Come Town brought that name to light as well. Um, we've done it on Patreon a long time ago, but I think he may warrant revisiting. Mm. But anyways, we've talked about people like that, but none of them have 
there's a unique quality as was as uh, Jerry Lewis said in King of Comedy. I don't know what it is, but you've got it. <laughs> and Tom Myers has that X factor. I don't I couldn't explain it to you, but boy do I know it when I see it. And this Ed Schrader show set truly is uh, a bombing of epic proportions that propelled Tom into the spotlight. How are you guys doing tonight? Everybody having a good time so far? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm in kind of a weird mood myself. I was on my way down here. I stopped at a convenience store. I'm waiting in line to pay, and the guy in front of me puts down a dozen donuts, two big bags of Doritos, one of those cheapo one-gallon bottles of the generic brand Fruit Punch, and a nasty, old, rotting banana. And he turns to the clerk and says to him, my girlfriend just had an operation. She can only eat certain things. I look at him, I look at him and I go, yeah, right. What, did she have a bong hit transplant? <laughs> that guy's in here right now, isn't he? Oh, shit. <laughs> Bong hit transplant. If any, if you know anyone that knows Tom Myers, the one thing they will absolutely know about him is exactly. bong hit transplant because Nick Mullen and Stavros Halkius gave you the breadcrumbs that you needed to find this within seconds. It was just available out there. It was on YouTube or whatever when people found it. And it's magnificent. Bong hit transplant is the perfect bad joke because if you were writing a, a purposely bad joke, it would be funnier than that. <laughs> you, you, you couldn't come up with something that ridiculous. Because even if someone, for whatever reason, said bong hit, well, oh, let's make the punchline uh, bong hit transplant. Like, it seems like they're going to get high. What can we insert there? What about bong hit transplant? You would say those words together don't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go say it on TV. What do you mean? Bong hit <laughs> transplant. What, what, <laughs> what on earth? I can't wrap my mind around that. So they literally let us... As, as listeners, right to what would endear Tom to us forever. And that's the bong hit transplant joke. For, it's his stairway to heaven. You know, oh, he'll yeah. never escape it. Yep, it's like sure. Radiohead uh, not playing creep. It's like they can not play it all they want, but we're going to ask for it. <laughs> but uh, his set there continues. Yeah. So here's the thing about this Ed Schrader show appearance. Bong hit transplant is the creme de la creme. But it goes on and frankly doesn't get a tremendous amount better. So it's an election year. It's an election year. You guys all excited about this election coming up? Yeah! Yes! Yeah. Actually? Yeah! Me, me, I'm an Obama person, but me, I kind of, part of me kind of wants Hillary Clinton to take the Oval Office. No, no, no. Okay, okay. Hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> What's the first thing Hillary Clinton's going to do when she gets in office? Get back. Yeah! Get back. No. Get back at Bill for all the shit he pulled. That's why I'm going to apply to be an intern. <laughs> I quit smoking. The, I quit smoking, though, so I don't know if that'll affect my oh, show. Go back just a little bit. I want to I, I want to hear that tag again. But before that, you hear a, a woman audibly go, what? <laughs> Which I don't think I've ever heard of a comedy show before. How does he not realize he's being mocked directly to his face? Well, that's what I wonder about, Tom. But I think those are the only laughs he's ever heard is when people are like, fuck yeah, Tom. Add away. Bong hit transplant. Great joke. <laughs> oh, you want to eat Hillary Clinton's pussy? That's tremendous. It's an office. No, hold on. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. Oops, sorry. Just because I want to explain that to the people out there. Because you're probably thinking, uh, certainly, Tom didn't mean what I think he meant. So Mike, please enlighten us. Could you, could you break <laughs> that down for us? What did Tom mean by that? Well, you guys may remember that uh, uh, Bill Clinton had a scandal with Monica Lewinsky um, where apparently they didn't have say he did not insert his member into her, but he did insert a cigar supposedly right. in, yep. uh, into her pussy. Turned her into a humidor. And so Tom, where Tom said, he said, Hey, 1998, to 2012 if he said it's election year so i think it's 2012 you know barely any time has passed monica lewinsky still front of mind for most people <laughs> so i'm gonna bring a classic like that back a classic topic like that but say that 
I am going to, as every man desires, <laughs> eat Hillary Clinton's pussy at age 68. <laughs> because she's going to try and, quote, get back at Bill for all the shit he pulled. That's now, true. I want to hear the, the tag to that again, if you don't mind. Do when she gets in office? Get back. Yeah! Get back. No. Get back at Bill for all the shit he pulled. That's why I'm going to apply to be an intern. <laughs> Hiking up his pants. I quit smoking. The, I quit smoking though, so I don't know if that'll affect my shot. But uh. also, I don't even understand that as a tag because if you examine it from the Monica Lewinsky angle, yeah, she'd she have to was, write on her resume that she smokes cigars. She, she did. She was not the smoker. It was Hillary would have to be the smoker for this to even. But that's the other thing. They didn't even necessarily smoke. I guess that's the idea ultimately. But it's like they're. The interesting thing about it wasn't like, hey, you smoke cigars. It's that he put it up an intern's pussy. That's the interesting <laughs> angle of it. <laughs> and uh, also, like, as if that would be part of the vetting process. Like, do you smoke? Because, you know, Hillary's going to want to stick a cigar up your asshole, apparently. <laughs> and then smoke it, I guess. I don't I, I, I don't understand any of it. It's amazing. <laughs> He continues. Well, here, but here's why I think Tom is such a sheltered guy because he just sees. I don't think Tom has like lived a life. He'll tell you how he's he's traveled the world, spinning his yarns and uh, ma making the citizens of America laugh. But I think he's pretty sheltered because I think if you break that joke down and deconstruct it, what you get is Tom sees that Hillary Clinton is a woman, so men must want to fuck her. I don't know if you've heard a lot of the any negativity surrounding Hillary Clinton, but I don't think that's generally the case. I don't think you're going to see her on Maxim. I don't think so. <laughs> but uh, this is uh, the last clip from this TV appearance. This is a big closer on uh, Ed Schrader show, I believe. Yeah, sure. When I was in school, I studied history. My favorite piece of history to study was the American Revolution. Why do I like studying the American Revolution? Well, I like it because, not because it's the laying of the foundations of democracy or how ordinary men can rise up to fight against the evils of tyranny. I like that people were able to grow an incredible amount hold of- Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go back, go back. Re restart it, in fact, because I don't want to do Tom a disservice by interrupting it. But, I mean, how hicks is he trying to be there? I mean, just down to even the look. Where the look, of course, as Mullen pointed out, but just the joke style where he's trying to kind of show you how smart he is. Now, Bill Hicks was able to do it more effortlessly because he was smart. Mm -hmm. But what Tom's doing here is he's kind of rattling off facts in a way that make you think, boy, this guy's really, he's got some panache here. This is a heady comedian. <laughs> When I was in school, I studied history. My favorite piece of history to study was the American Revolution. Why do I like studying the American Revolution? Well, I like it because, well. <laughs> not because it's the laying of the foundations of democracy or how ordinary men can rise up to fight against the evils of tyranny. I like that people were able to grow an incredible amount of pot back then and get away with it. That's why I love studying the American Revolution. Yeah. yeah All those who really support me oh, behind yeah. that are going, I'd applaud. I just don't feel like lifting my arms, dude. <laughs> The host is just laughing at him. <laughs> they don't like puns, I don't think. They don't okay, like hold on, hold on, hold on. You got to go back again because we're going to have to hear that again. But, but first of all, and this is, this is the theme of a lot of Tom's jokes. Again, talking about sheltered. Like in the Hillary Clinton joke, we see woman, man must want to fuck woman. That's what a, a person would think if you've only like watched television and that's the only experience you ever have in life. This is all this is very similar in the sense that it's like, oh, pot lazy. Also, he calls it pot, which is very hip. But <laughs> he's, he thinks, oh, uh, uh, a stoner. Obviously, they can't lift their arms. And that's his punchline for every joke he has about weed is like, oh, those people are probably here. But they're just so high out of their mind that they're not able to laugh. And it's, again, a defense mechanism. But here what he says here, here's another excuse we've heard before. Uh, maybe people don't know about Arnold Schwarzenegger because they're not from California, I guess. <laughs> yeah. What was uh, what was the other one that? Uh, oh, they can't do math. Yeah. He said, he said, you're I'm dragging. You know, I just got a smartphone. They're dragging me into 2007 
and it was 2013. So no one laughed. So we're like, I guess you guys can't do math. Yeah. Now here's the reason. What do you want me to say? Six? Like I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. No, I I added it up. I just still am not laughing. <laughs> um, now here's the most interesting thing, because at least those the, uh, plausible is the wrong word. I don't know. I don't know the right word for something that technically makes sense, but also doesn't at the same time. <laughs> is there a word for that? Leave it in the comments. I don't know. Um, but those I can wrap my mind around. This I don't know what he's talking about here. So he t- he says, "Hey, like stoners are lazy, I guess." Mm-hmm. And then you know, there's, there's a lull, and Tom has his diagnosis. Yeah, the the lull, by the way, for the visually impaired, it yes, cuts right. to the host of the show, who has just buried his head in his hands and is laughing at how bad Tom is. <laughs> and he's also thinking, "I've I've done it." <laughs> yes, <laughs> I can die now. <laughs> yeah, I've done it all. <laughs> with it that's why i love studying the american revolution yeah all those who really support me behind that are going i'd applaud i just don't feel like lifting my arms dude <laughs> they don't like puns i don't think they don't like the bun okay pun. pun. i uh i don't know the definition of pun but i know that's not it <laughs> where, where, the, where where's the pun <laughs> i know that's not accurate <laughs> a pun is like a word play or a sound alike. Like you're inserting a word that sounds like it should be there, but it shouldn't. Oh, would you look at that? Not, there's not a pun to be found. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Just saying people who smoke pot are lazy. See, that's another what I love to get Tom on and ask him is Tom, um, what do you think innate means? Because make America innate again as a sentence doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Innate to what? <laughs> And what do you think a pun is? Because I'd like to play that joke and get some answers here. But Tom will never do it, apparently. Not even for three figures. (laughs) And a lot of advocates who want to legalize marijuana use that, too. You ever notice that? They say, well, we should be able to grow pot and smoke it because our founding fathers grew pot and smoked it. Our founding fathers, the same people who had to physically fight for the right of this country to exist, smoked pot? I don't think so. How do I know this? Because I've tried pot, okay? Oh. Remember, I did take this course in college. Again, pause. That's the sheltered thing I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Where he's like, guys, not to be too crazy here, but I have gone to college. I've dabbled in marijuana. Hmm, not to. You, you think you're the only person that's gone outside, Tom? <laughs> I've smoked pot. <laughs> Have you done edibles? No, I'm not a fucking drug addict. <laughs> oh, whoa, I'm not, I'm not in Guns and Roses. Jesus. <laughs> I'd love to, ma'am. I'd love to, but if I tried it, I know that me and anyone else who has smoked pot can tell you after you smoke pot, you do not feel like going off and fighting a revolution. Everyone smoked pot back then. Paul Revere would be galloping down the street like, Thank you very much for coming, dudes. Luckily for me, I got enough. I can share. <laughs> you guys have been a great crowd. That's my time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, that's brutal. Oh, that's the... <laughs> at least, but at least he knew how to close. You guys have been great. I'm Tom Myers. I'm getting out of here. Not a... Uh, hey, so... I'm gonna, the traffic's getting a little crazy. I'm going to be heading out. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to the line. I forgot how to close. I'm just going to beat it. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, folks have been great. The biggest reaction was a woman saying, what? <laughs> In stunned disbelief at his Hillary Clinton joke. Uh, but, All right. Uh, where are we now? We're going back to Come Town. Yeah, so let's hear a little more. This is, I just wanted to give examples of how Nick Mullen and crew on Come Town made Tom into a the cult figure he is today. I had a tour of comics one time. He like put together, well, he goes, I told Andy Klein, I'm like, yeah, Tom's got his own uh, tour now with comics. It's him, Brett the Irish comic, Cat Malone, and... Uh, I think I can't remember who else was on it and fucking uh, 
Danny Klein goes, what's it called? The shitty comics? <laughs> <laughs> it was even better, though. It was yeah, called The Heathens. The Heathens. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's bad. The yeah, fucking that's Heathens, bad. dude. And the logo was a burning cross. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was. <laughs> oh, you got that's MySpace. like a KKK. I know. Tom yep. just didn't know. He <laughs> thought it, he thought it meant like set Jesus on fire. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, oh yeah. Tom, so big I, Tommy. No, the the Hamilton Arts Collective had 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 the Heathens of Comedy. There it was hosted by Lucy Fur, which was just a videotape <laughs> of the Irish comic wearing sunglasses in front of a fireplace. <laughs> And during, hosted uh, by a video. Yeah. Dude, Tom, Tom, during Tom, <laughs> the job that's only about energy and getting the fucking audience involved. <laughs> Tom did a fucking like hour, and during his set, after every setup, Tony Grasick starts going, uh, "Tom Myers, Tom Myers." So before he gets to the punchline, everyone's chanting his name, and, he says it. and then their response is, "Yeah," you know, he, like Peter's now. So he's, not, he's like bombing to chant. I'm just realizing now how much we were ripping off Come Town by what we were doing. <laughs> the Baltimore comedy scene had been doing what we did for years before. <laughs> but, but what they did was a great job, and it really shows you, like, um, on the Kirk Minahan show, people will say, like, oh, it's so hard to explain, like, it's so inside or whatever. But if the host does a good job, which Kirk is obviously great at, and I think Nick Mullen's very good at it, too, like, if the host is good enough at explaining things, you're able to feel like you know this person. And then it inspires you to go examine them. No one, no one knew who the fuck Tom Myers was. But at a certain point, you felt like you did. And you wanted to hear more about him. And that's what they did a great job at setting up, is people were fascinated by Tom Myers and wanted to learn more about him and hear more from him. But unfortunately, for, Tom would not play along and got very hostile and angry at Come Town. And people like Louis J. Gomez would try and like get him to do Legion of Skanks and things to try and lift Tom up. But Tom didn't get. And here's the thing about not being self-aware, a mixture of not being self-aware and being completely arrogant is it shields you from joking about yourself. You're not allowed to do it. You're not. I should say you're not capable of doing it. And that's the, the disease that Tom suffers from is he's not capable at making himself the joke. It's very similar to Stuttering John. A lot of you guys are Stuttering John followers out there and enjoy watching that train wreck as well. And they have a lot in common in the sense that on, on a surface level, and Opie from Opie and Anthony, same thing. On a surface level, they're, they're able to make fun of themselves. They're able to throw out a joke and the, the punchline being something like, oh, I'm dumb or I'm ugly. Uh, you know, I, I'm an idiot or I'm a screw up, whatever. But as long as it's not attached to anything. You know what I mean? Like Stuttering John's able to say like, oh, I'm an ugly fuck. But if you call it, if, if, if an enemy is making fun of that, then he immediately gets defensive. Mm. So you're able to you're able to make fun of it on a very basic surface level. If there's nothing attached to it, if there's any truth behind it, immediately you get defensive and you go on the attack and try to attack those people. And that's what Tom did to Nick Mullen, unfortunately. So they, honestly, I know like Nick was really just, like, I'm not going to make it into a thing like Nick's a saint who was just trying to help Tom Myers. No, he enjoyed making fun of Tom. But at a, at a certain point, they were they kind of felt bad for what they had done and were trying to get tom to benefit from it in some way trying to get him fans trying to bring him to shows pay him money and tom was completely resistant to it if he goes on like if he i think you've talked about it if he labels himself the worst comedian of all time or whatever and he does a tour called bombing across america yeah it would sell really well. honestly words of mass destruction if that if it was ironic right right then that works right but uh, uh, come town. Uh, hello, Haver de Grace. Oh, this is them talking a little more about. Uh, well, we went to Haver de Grace. We said hello to Haver de Grace. This is them talking about uh, make America innate again. We listen to 
Make America innate, innate again. I'm so time. jealous. Yeah, I was. I mean, in, you can listen to it at any time. Nah, it was, it's, about, it's about the experience. It really, it, needs, it really needs like a deep read. It needs to be. It needs. I might, I might write. Theater. I might write a review of the album. I tried to get us detail. to do. I tried to get us to do that for uh-huh. the last one. Remember? Yeah. But there was like yeah. legal problems. Like we're probably stealing his content. Yeah. It's also. I guess at this point I've blown up Tom's spot enough yeah. that it's like, all right, it's too late now. Might Should, as well talk about him. Can we do his bonus episodes? <laughs> a a track by track. Yeah. Like well, th- what we were doing was like you have to unpack every joke, so you got to pause yeah, it every, and then conver- every have a conversation. About every it. single yeah, thing that's he fact. says is yeah. it opens Literally. up with uh, "Hello, Haberta Grace," which is incredible. Like, just nobody a, knows what yes, that is. That is yes. a random <laughs> city in Maryland. Not yeah. city. That it's is a, a, it's random, a town with a population a of probably like. Seven thousand. It's a yeah, place. Like Bel Air is their downtown. Yeah, yeah. They go to <laughs> Bel Air, Maryland. It's <laughs> just a place. <laughs> <laughs> now I've been there, and that's exactly right. It, rem- it was a lot like the town I grew up in. It's probably ten thousand people or something like that. You know. Let's ch- uh, let's take a look. But what's interesting, like, and th- what they're breaking down there is literally the first two words of the special. He says, "Hello, Haver de Grace," and immediately you want to pause it and examine it. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what sets Tom apart from like like we talked about Matt Rife on the Blind Mike project, and I think there's a lot to criticize about Matt Rife. Main, my main takeaway with Matt Rife was not so much like anger at him. I just felt he was unoriginal, as a lot of 28 year old comedians are. The thing I was more fascinated by was how popular he got, mm-hmm. and like you know the guy's selling out everywhere and charging crazy amounts for tickets. So like good for him, but. I think a lot of his material is very unoriginal because he's a young comedian. Uh, but if we were to break down his entire special, there's not you're not stopping at every five seconds and critiquing it. There's some stuff that's like, eh, whatever, or maybe it's not funny, but you can at least get through the joke. <laughs> right. Tom, Tom, you almost want to stop every word and analyze it. Oh, and yeah. that's, that's what Cometown was able to pick up on. Yep. Um Haver de Grace uh, population just shy of fifteen thousand. Okay, so right, yeah, about where I thought, a little more, but not much. Um, but this, yeah, that's the same. I grew up in a town of fifteen thousand people, so. <laughs> uh, this is uh, come town reflects. Uh, yeah, so let's let's. Oh, but I do want. They did. Uh, I forget if it was pitchforks, torches, and other random thoughts, or uh, uh, make America Nate again. But they did end up going through a lot of the tracks. And Nick was doing a thing where he was flicking through real quick. And you just, you realize, you hear Tom start every track with, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, you learn that was his crutch because that's how every track starts. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, this is them uh, feeling a little guilty. This is one of my biggest fuck ups is not understanding like, yeah. And it's obvious. No, not being mean, but like, you know, Tom was like sort of just this like, spectacle that existed yeah. <laughs> back when like we were just like essentially just we're open, open micers. Micers. Yeah, yeah. and even yeah. when i had been working the road for, nobody knew who the fuck i was yeah. and everyone from the scene knew tom and it was kind of this funny thing and then you get like a little bit of success and it's like you don't really gauge how big the audience is or whatever you yeah. continue just living your life yeah and then it's like yeah tom's this funny thing and then tom blows up into this thing and that like you know, I don't know. I don't really know how Tom's head works, but at some point he realized that it's like, you know, fucking with him or whatever. Right. In a way that Joe Robinson used to do all the time. Right. Mm. We actually got him fans. Well, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to present it in a way where it's like actually. No, it is true. I did a good thing for Tom. No, we didn't no, do. We didn't, didn't do. No, we were. Bullying. We didn't do a good thing. Yeah. But at least the other types of bullying was just to humiliate him. Right. Yeah. This was a little column A, little column B. And I think to some extent he does have some notion that every attempt we've had at destruction has only made him stronger. He's, listen, he's fucking. <laughs> I think he feels. He, and then <laughs> he's powerful. He's grown more powerful. <laughs> but that that's the interesting thing and that's true and here's where like because we've even gotten some of this and i've you know we don't we don't know tom i met him once unfortunately but uh we don't know him but we get comments like uh are you are you guys bullying him or something like that and here's the way i see it and we have a much smaller audience than come town did <laughs> um but i look at even what come town did is like you're making fun of him. He's putting this content out there. 
and I agree with Stavros, where it is actually shittier to make fun of a guy in private behind his back with other people that know him and are like polite to him when they see him. Like that's just being shitty for, you know, your own sake kind of. Whereas what come town did is like introduce an audience to the stuff that he's putting out there. They can judge it on their own. And there are a lot of people that like, yes, they're mocking Tom, but they are fans of his. That's what we talk about with Brendan Schaub all the time. It's like we went to Laugh Boston to see Brendan Schaub. Mm-hmm. I have a Brendan, I have a, a thick boy hat here that I wear on the on the program sometimes. That's done in in jest, in mockery. Sorry to break the fourth wall, but at times it is. <gasps> I know. I'm sorry. I, I, I hate to do that to you. Spoiler alert. Shatter, shatter a boy's dream. Yeah. <laughs> but what the, the reason I'm saying that is on some level, I'm a fan of his. You know, mm-hmm. I enjoy. We got a lot of laughs out of Gringo Poppy. Mm-hmm. Is it for the reason Brendan Brendan intended? Mm-mm. No, but I still got enjoyment out of it. Like he's given me a great deal of laughter and content for my show. So in that way, I'm thankful and grateful toward him. And that's how I felt about Tom at a certain point. I hope he crushes at Skankfest. I hope it's just shop. Yeah, I hope it just catches everyone by surprise. Well, that that's that's it's an interesting line in the sand that Brendan is facing, and it's one that I think Tom completely bungled. If Brendan is able to run with it and have a good time with it, I think that's nothing but beneficial to him. And so, say he bombs, though, I don't think anyone there is going to be like, "Dude, you fucking suck." They'll just be like, "Thanks for coming," and they'll still be nice to him. Well, here's the thing: is here's what people will say if Brendan plays along. It's like, yeah, I mean, do I think he's a great comic? No. But you know what? He might be a better guy than I realized. Maybe right. he's a, maybe he's an all right guy. Right. Maybe he can fuck around and have some fun w- about himself. Tom Myers, I thought that of him, and I wanted to get him on the show to kind of expose that. And again, like I said, I'm under no delusions. We have a much smaller audience than Come Town. We have a much smaller audience than WATP. So I'm under no delusion that suddenly the tide is going to turn and I'm going to make Tom's career. But I think to a small segment of the people that know who he is. They would say after that interview, oh, you know what? He's a good guy. I like him. I'd like to support some of his shit. And maybe we'll be laughing for the wrong reasons, but I'd like to support it. And I think that's what we did with Richard Ojeda. And that's why I had the idea to do it with Tom. But then you learn, oh, Tom's just an asshole. Yeah. There's no playfulness attached to this. He's an arrogant prick who has allowed the success that Come Town has given him to get to his head, yet not acknowledge why he has that you know the the audience that he has whatever they are right right he's just a a, a full-fledged cunt <laughs> he, he, yeah he really he exposed himself as that but uh, it was unfortunate and i'm not the only guy who tried to give tom that kind of a platform is uh is his appearance on real ass podcast the next one yep so another man a man i, I admire is uh louis j gomez And uh, he had not just tried, but had Tom on. And I thought maybe Tom was going to play along. He did to an extent, but again, only in the way that Tom is capable of. He's not capable of fully letting his hair down and letting himself be the butt of the joke. So this is Luis J. Gomez, Zach Amico, and uh, the great Tim Dillon, who has gone on to great success after this interview. Not not necessarily because of it, but since it. this is them talking to Tom Myers and uh, breaking down some of his material. It was a it was a joke I wrote a long time ago. It was I'm sorry I should have said this up. Long hit transplant. Not not some of his material. <laughs> <laughs> the pinnacle. They're analyzing the greatest joke ever told here. It was a it was a joke I wrote a long time ago. It was stupid. It got laughs, and you know I eventually like most jokes. I got tired of telling it, and then did it I make stopped. its way onto one of the albums? I. Don't know. I don't, don't make America so. innate again. Or can or, I tell you? Here's maybe. here's why I know. I, I used to think that Tom was completely oblivious and just so arrogant that he felt he was like really funny and was, you know, impervious to embarrassment. But in this interview, we don't have uh, the clip of it. But in a different section of the interview, um, they're asking about his different albums, and they said, "What? Which album was? Oh, you know what? It was the one that uh, Nick Mullen opened for." 
and they go, which which album was that that he opened for? And he, he Tom goes, oh, I, I don't remember the name of it. And they said, you don't remember the name of your album? And he goes, ah, uh, it was, well, it was like Pitchforks and something, something, something. And they're like, what? We could, we'll just look it up. Like, why aren't you telling it? So what I noticed in that moment is that Tom was embarrassed mm -hmm. and didn't want to tell them, A, what his album was called, because he probably knew it was a mockable title, and B, didn't want to direct people to it. And so that's a weird place to be where you're arrogant about your accomplishments, yet don't want to promote your own material. I find that very interesting. Maybe on pitchforks, but I don't. Gotcha. I don't. I like how it goes. Oh, this is after that. I forgot. <laughs> Hold on, go back, go back. I'm sorry. This is after the moment I was just talking about, where they had uh, uncovered that it was pitchforks, torches, and other random thoughts. And I like uh, Lewis's observation here. <laughs> no, I don't. Is it on Make America so. Innate again, or words of message? It may. Torture. It may be on pitchforks, but I don't. Gotcha. I don't. I like how it goes. No. Pitchforks. Now explain to me the thinking behind a joke because you see all of this, so it's like. It's all this unhealthy food, and then you're right. like, you know, this guy basically saying she can only eat certain foods after an operation. Now, I'm all with you on the premise. Right. And then you go, what did she have? A bong hit. It's a punchline. You're right. Transplant. You're right. It's not the premise. The punchline is the issue. Yeah. That's the only issue with the joke. Everything right. else is actually really the good. premise is kind of funny. I love the premise. The premise is not bad. The punchline. He could have said a. That's, a, a, that's a, the next a album. That's an album. I want to shoot myself in the face for Tom right now. <laughs> he's, he's got. He's got to be so oh. uncomfortable. People analyzing your jokes. Oh, but this just, is brutal. Just, well, I, I think Tim Dillon offers some great insight, actually. Full of premises. A cheapo type of soda. Well, oh, let's just spitball it here. You go like, oh, this, 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 this guy puts all this disgusting food. He's got fucking M and M's and Cheetos and. See, that's my where I would go. What does a dirty banana have? To and do any, with any, food? anything involving food. Zach is in on it. Yes, of course. Oh, shit, so this guy puts oh, in your foot. fucking fat yeah. face. <laughs> your face. No one's safe. I thought Lewis did do a good job of trying to lift Tom Myers up throughout this interview, but then you learn Tom doesn't necessarily need lifting. Yeah, he's trying to lift him up. Tim's actually trying to help him. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. The dirty banana have to deal with high people because high people just eat anything. Okay. Well, that's not true. You're so trying to <laughs> you know what's going on. He's being racist. I'm, I'm generalizing. He's saying brown people. But so to, to the drugs. bong hit trans, but the only problem with that. Is that it doesn't it does it doesn't make sense to punch the punch? Yeah, once you start to break down the punchline, and here's what you don't want it, people doing yeah. is when when you tell a punchline, you don't want people to not laugh and think about why they're not laughing. Right, and that's what I think this punchline does. It makes yeah. people want to leave the club. Yeah, they go, no, that's not right. This <laughs> is an album something's either. wrong. They go, yeah. something is wrong here, and I should leave and 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 it's not an never come back. It's an uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I should leave and never come back. <laughs> Something's wrong here. <laughs> That's where I think Tim is great on uh, his show. I haven't. Li I know people have said, you know, uh, he's not putting as much effort into it these days. I don't know if that's true, but like I think Tim has a great like talk radio kind of instinct where he can break something down in that way and make it very funny. Oh where yeah, he's talking and it, you get the sense that he believes what he's saying, and then you're like. Oh, he's completely mocking Tom. <laughs> that made my skin crawl for him. That was so uncomfortable. It's rough, but also, like, I think if you're Tom, you have to embrace that. Because, yes, on some level, they're busting his balls. That's what comedians do to one another. Mm -hmm. But also, like, you have these guys, and like I said, Tim wasn't the level that he is now. Right. But you have these two guys who are far ahead of you in comedy trying to help you. And I don't think Tom took any of it in. No, not a second. Unfortunately, they tried their damnedest. I think Tom was on like once or twice more on Real Ass Podcast. But there was also like he tried to hold Lewis over a barrel where he, Lewis was like, come do Legion of Skanks. And he's like, well, I'll do it if you allow me to perform at Skank Fest. And t t Lewis was just like, this is a negotiation. I'm trying to have you on a major platform. <laughs> not gonna haggle with me. I you're mean, not gonna talk like at least Lewis had the guts to be like, you're not gonna talk to my agent, me. We were like, all right, fine, we'll talk to your agent. <laughs> oh man, they should have let him go on Skankfest. <sighs> I know, I know. It's a shame. <laughs> As someone who's been there, it's a shame. It would have been nice to see Tom walk up there, but uh but uh next is uh him talking about 
talking to Nick Mullen. That that's by the way, what Tom doesn't get is that would have brought the fucking house down. It really would have, but it would have been laughing at him, not with him, in very <sighs> clearly at him. Yeah, but but also not is what I'm trying to say. Mm. It's like there you can disagree, but like there's comedians that people don't find funny that won't get that kind of reaction. Because he's, because he's the worst. That's exactly right. That's that's an achievement. That's he what I'm should, trying to say. He really it, should embrace it before it's th too late. They're respecting you at being the greatest at something. The greatest bad comedian. <laughs> and, you know, that's I, I am joking, but like also there are a lot of bad comedians out there. So to stand out as the number one, that's something that you should embrace. It's interesting. Right. right. But yeah. So this is him. He was on with uh, the Chapo, Tra Chapo Trap House guys. I don't remember. Um, and they're friends with like Nick and Adam and those guys. So they ask about uh, that situation. Would you at least like be on neutral terms with them? Would you at least like be civil with them? I mean, just given the fact that they've completely misrepresented some stuff I've said, completely lied about stuff I've said that made me sound bad and gone after and just completely disparaged friends of mine, I mean, the answer is no. I mean, I've known Nick Mullen since he started like some 15 years ago. I was already a touring comic when he started. <laughs> and whenever I would see him perform, I would always just get the impression that before each set, he would just drink an entire gallon of paint. And and that was Whoa. I always just tried to Harsh. stay away from him even then. So it 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 predated any the 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 wide world of podcasts. Yeah, so he's just completely resistant to it. Now what he's saying there is like, oh well, he's made fun of me and my friends, and and I would say that's a reason you go on with him. Like Tom talks about himself like he's this, you know, great prolific comedian. So it should be easy for him to come up with material. I mean, you heard a zinger there where it seems like Nick Mullen drinks paint. Meanwhile, no. Nick Mullen's like a brilliant comedian. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, and, and just very funny, like Nick Mullen built an empire, a podcasting empire off of not trying for six years. Like that's something that should be marveled at. And Tom's like, basically just fuck him. That's a reason you should go on with him if you're able to own him. But I think deep down, that's why I mentioned that earlier, where Tom was getting like embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I think deep down, he doesn't have the confidence that he portrays publicly necessarily. Definitely not. Now, the problem with that, that's something I can sympathize with. I can sympathize with not having confidence. The problem is Tom, you know, consumes that and projects it into the world into arrogance and basically tells people, fuck you. Because he's insecure about a lot of that stuff. Right. But uh, we're actually at our last clip. My God, this flew by. It really didn't. Uh, well, this is just, this is a, this is a little <laughs> Tom. Tom kept up with the times, you know, Tom, Tom's never stopped being Tom. And he knows how to, how to go after the big gun. So I've often said, I think the, the best touring comedian right now is Shane Gillis. And. Tom's not afraid to go after the king. He the one. I got to introduce my lady to Tom Myers this past week. That's awesome. Oh my he, god. He was. I went to McGooby's, and they announced that and I was Tom coming to McGooby's, and Tom fucking smashed me on the comments. He was mm -hmm. like, "I hope you guys have Chinese food." <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> this what, this what I love about Tom. This is what I love. This is what I love about Tom. Who is that? Don't hurt him. This is what I love about Tom. Is that like it's like a it's just it's it's schizophrenic because it doesn't make any sense. What do you mean? So Chinese people are going to come to the show, even though he's racist against so Chinese funny, people. Dude, it doesn't make any sense. So I got to show. We we listened, dude, on the drive back from Pittsburgh this past week. We listened to "Make America Nate Again." Yeah, the whole way. Fire. Amazing. The whole way through, uh -huh. it was, it's fucking crazy, dude. Mm -hmm. And the, the, Ian was in the backseat. He was the one asking for it. Finance was like, yeah. let's listen, let's listen to it. Blah. <laughs> it's so interesting. Like Tom has very popular comedians that are fascinated by him and hasn't been able to parlay that into anything. And I just think he lets his ego get in the way so much. And the other thing that Nick points out there is so true where Tom has the ability to like link things to where it's like, oh, I, I get why you had that thought, 
but the way it's formulated in your head doesn't make any sense. Right. Like Shane Gill is saying he's going to Magoobies. Tom replies, hope they have Chinese food there. <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, I get the Chinese. I get Shane got fired from SNL for comments about Asian people. What does it mean you hope they have Chinese food there? Is Shane then going to talk about it on stage and you hope that happens? What the, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, I was going to do stand up, but then I noticed the crab rangoons. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, but also, why would you hope that? I don't, I, none of it makes sense. Yet there's something about Tom that makes that interesting. It makes his lack of uh, direction in his punchlines. It's so fascinating. Like I said, there's 10 million bad comedians. Not all of them could we do an hour plus show on. And that's what makes Tom really stand out. And frankly, it's what makes him the world's worst comedian. So I hope we did a good job displaying that. I'm sure at some point uh, we'd be fully capable of doing a Tom Myers part two. If you guys are interested in that, because we really just, this is just the greatest hits, right? We, we, any Tom Myers fan that made it through this episode is saying, oh, you guys are, are novices. You barely scratched the surface with Tom Myers. Believe me, I know. But I wanted to give the masses the uh, the gist before we get too crazy. I wanted to make sure you guys were ready for him. He's the best. The the worst. <laughs> he sure is. So let me know you guys think in the comments. Should we do more episodes like this? Like I said, I know a lot of people love uh, loved the Dat Fan episode. Want to hear from Dan Ninen and other characters like that. So uh, leave your thoughts in the comments. Leave any suggestions you may have. Um, make sure you comment on YouTube because it helps the algorithm. And subscribe if you wouldn't mind. That uh, helps the show. Gets more gets more peepers on it. Um, best way to find where to get the podcast is blindmike.net. You can find all the free links to all of our shows. Not just Why You Laughing, but also the Blind Mike Project and Who Are These Socials. Um, as well as the YouTube page that Blind Mike Project and Why Are You Laughing are both on. So make sure you subscribe to that. Our merch is up there on blindmike.net as well. And then uh, most importantly, if you want to support the show, if you want to get bonus Why Are You Laughing episodes, as well as these episodes a week early, then make sure you check out the Patreon. And all of that is at blindmike.net. Uh, you can also check out, if that's not enough content for you, then make sure you check out what Craig is doing over at uh, Very Good Show. Now, you heard about the heathens of comedy that Tom was a part of? Yeah. Tom accidentally put a burning cross on his logo. <laughs> that's that's just not right. But I recommend you go check out what Very Good Show is doing. <laughs> yeah. None of that. No, because none they that get enough. pretty zany. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to discover the true heathens of comedy... The barbarians of comedy, if you will. Yeah. Go check out Very Good Show, and uh, verygoodshow.org is where you can find all of their stuff. Sure is. <laughs> what a sell. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's, uh, that's that, I guess. We'll talk to you guys next time on Why Are You Laughing? Zip it up and zip it out. Yeah.